how are we doing this morning? <laughs> Happy Independence Day! Yay! Yay! Welcome, friends, family, and neighbors. Thank you for joining us in person or live on Facebook. Oh, and thank you, Pilot. Pilot joined us today. I think that's great. You can also find us on WOW Cable or view the services on YouTube, on the YouTube channel, anytime during the week. Well, it has happened. Welcome, Pastor Erin Fitzgerald. Woo, here she comes. Yay! <laughs> Isn't she beautiful? And just got a couple of little sweet babies that are going to be part of our family. Good morning. So I'd like to take a moment to welcome Pastor Aaron Fitzgerald to Marshall United Methodist Church. Pastor Aaron has already stood up and run down the aisle, so we know how to work her already. <laughs> uh, Pastor Aaron and her husband Joel have just finished moving two offices, two kids, a dog and an entire household to our area. So to start the new positions here at MUMC, and Joel is at Albion First United Methodist Church. Pastor Aaron will be in the narthex to meet and greet you after the services, so if you want to take a minute and chat with her, please do so. Next up is a word from our new worship director, modern worship director, excuse me. Hey, Rob. Good morning. So if I haven't formally met you yet, I am Rob Monahan. I am the new Modern Music Worship Director. You've probably seen me periodically from February with the Modern Group up there having so much fun, and now it's officially official and having even more fun working with everybody. So I just wanted to extend an invitation for anyone who is interested online or in person watching. If anyone has an interest in wanting to perform on stage with us, whether it be violin, flute, Extra bass players, guitar players, singers, you name it. I will, drummers, that is very true. So I will be very happy to welcome anybody on stage who wants to try it out, have fun, and just worship and honor with us during the service. And media. See, I'm glad you guys are sitting here. <laughs> Nine and 11. So yeah, I appreciate your time. Thank you for being here, everyone, and watching online. And Happy Independence Day, as Ruth Ann already mentioned. Thanks, Rob. Over a year ago, the Food Bank of South Central Michigan approached MUMC about a fresh food distribution in our community. Last month, we celebrated one year anniversary of providing fresh food to those in our area. Yes, that was a, that's a good day. Here's a short video with Pastor Melanie from that first anniversary. Check this out. Change, change, change. That's all we've been talking about lately. It's nice to find out that some things will not change. And one of those around here at MUMC is the fresh food distribution. What a need. We just celebrated our first anniversary of being chosen to be the distributor in our community. And what an honor that is to, to have them placed in our care. And uh, today, knowing it was my last opportunity to walk through the line, and I always greet and just check in on people and see how they're doing and welcome them to this place and, and pray for them if they have a need. But, but today I was able to say, you know, this is going to be my last time walking through and I just want to wish you and your family well. And I let them know why we were playing music in the background and why there are balloons and, and all of that. But, you know, they really opened up and they began to share a few things. And some of those included generational need. Mothers going home to provide food for their daughter who has major um, arthritis, so much so she can't get out of bed by herself. And she's way younger than me. And here's mom getting food for her and the kids. And elderly, couple after couple, just don't have enough. And so what we do makes that possible. Thank you. Thank you, MUMC. 
Just a little over a year ago, uh, the Food Bank of South Central Michigan uh, approached Melanie here at Marshall United Methodist Church to sponsor a fresh food distribution. And we said yes. Thank you, Pastor Melanie, for saying yes. We really move quick, don't we? We are a busy bunch of folks. In addition to all the volunteers who made the first anniversary special with balloons, cookie bags, live music, and more, we'd like to offer a special thank you to Tommy Hill and Bruce Arnold. Yeah, that's you. <laughs> who have now made all 13 distributions. Congratulations and thank you so much for doing that. Again, welcome to worship. Please stand if you're able and join us for our opening hymn, America the Beautiful. Please join me now in a prayer of illumination. We stand today as our forefathers have stood before you in times gone by, celebrating our history and remembering in all the monumental things that our country has achieved. Yet as a nation and people of faith, we have not always chosen the right path. We have failed to reflect your light and heart. We ask you to forgive us for these times. On this day, we may commit ourselves to wholeheartedly honoring and serving you with everything that we are and lay our lives before you. These have been difficult months, but on this day, we rejoice in the blessings of freedom that you have graciously showered on us. We thank you for the blessings of liberty for this generation, and we pray for the generations to come Lord, restore peace where there is unrest. Replace anger with love, mercy, and reconciliation. Where there is hurt, bring healing. Lord, restore our land. Protect those who have bravely given their lives in the defense of freedom and justice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. On our first scripture reading this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18. My pages don't want to turn. 18 and 19. Forget the former things. 
Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Our second scripture reading comes this morning from Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Amen.
morning again. If you missed my initial introduction, I am Rob Monahan, the Modern Music Worship Director. Um, so we had this whole change transition, everything the last few weeks that everyone has witnessed and bared, and we've made it through now to our new beginning. And we're very happy. So we kind of did a little something different today. So we're having four speakers talking about change that happened with them in the last year or so. I have quite the few last few years, but I'll condense it down quite a bit. Um, so my initial changes that I went through happened a little while ago, but it's amazing how the last five, six years, everything has shifted into where I am right now. And the pandemic kind of pushed everything kind of there, and it's just seeing everything falling into place. So my brief life story is I was raised Methodist. Uh, I played in the praise band about 11 years ago. Um, had a lot of fun doing that. And I also um, just half led, half joined in, just sang, performed, and had a lot of fun doing that. Um, so as the years went by, we'll go forward to about 2015. So I ended up going up into the UP, going and studying music at Northern Michigan University. Um, enjoyed everything there, kind of got me out of my shell, got me into more performance uh, as far as professional type of performance. Um, I had kind of an interesting time, a little bit of transition right there, and I had some difficult life decisions I had to make because things were just not panning out the way I was envisioning they were going to work out. Um, so one day I ended up meeting my wife actually who was there for the weekend in Marquette and I just couldn't stay away from her. She was too nice and too awesome. Uh, she was born and raised here in Marshall. I had never heard of Marshall before. I'm like, hmm, okay. So I ended up moving down here and kind of, again, those life choices pushed me into being down here in Marshall. Um, I ended up teaching uh, as like an extracurricular activity through Go Lake Partnership. Um, so I've been working with students for about four or five years now. Um, it's been just so very rewarding, a lot of fun. Kids say the most interesting things at times. Um, but I love seeing their growth and development. Um, but then I started making local connections from there. Um, and just whether it be musically, um, any other odd job I was doing. Um, so fast forward just a tiny bit more. Um, I was teaching at a different church here in Marshall and then the pandemic had hit. Um, lessons got dropped because we didn't know what was happening with the schools. Um, it was a very interesting time. And then I was told that I couldn't be teaching anymore at that church. And I had to kind of find a new space to have to teach. And I'm like, okay, let me see what we can figure out because I, I have to have, with the partnership, it has to be a middle ground. So I can't teach within my home. I can't teach anywhere privately. It has to be a public space. So it led me to here. And there was an opening in, the, in a back room here, and I started teaching lessons out of that. Once the restrictions started lifting, mask mandates started coming out, it allowed me to start teaching in person. And very thankful for the virtual world of where it has kind of come. But at that point in time, with virtual lessons being brand new and working with a lot of children, and they were going through their life transitions, parents were going through their transitions trying to figure out schooling, it was a very stressful time for everybody. Um, so I was very thankful and fortunate to have that online learning, but I thrive on in-person learning, and a lot of my students do too. Um, and it's just, it's not quite the same connection as you would have from doing in-person lessons. So I did that until about, I'm still teaching, but I, until about December, I had a conversation with Ann here and with Rachel. It's just very random conversation because my voice students I was trying to have a space that I could have for my voice students all sing together and practice harmony, and the room I was in wasn't able to keep up with the restrictions of, a, of social distancing. So I ended up talking with them and getting into the choir room, and I saw a little plaque on the wall that said, Modern Music Worship Director. I'm like, oh, like I didn't know that you guys had a worship director for that. And they said, oh, well, we really don't going through a transition. I'm like, really? 
that sounds like something I would be interested in. So I just kind of moved from there and I had been volunteering with the praise team for since about end of January, beginning of February. Um, just, it's been so much fun working with everybody. They're all really easy to talk to, really cool people, great musicians. Um, they would give you the shirt off their back if you had asked for it. Um, so I've been kind of doing that and then the interview process came and then it became official. And yeah, just loving every minute of it. So there is my, I guess you can call it 11 year process. But in the last five, six years, everything has been very shifting of kind of heavy heartbreak at school, moving to Marshall, making local connections with, uh, with music and through the Go Like partnership, and then having pushed into here for teaching with that partnership, conversation with them for the modern music director, and here I am now. So really funny and cool to see the process of all of that. So appreciate your time listening to my little short story. But now we move on to Ruth Ann. Thank you. Good morning. My name's Ruth Ann Holmes. I'm the office manager here at MUMC, and this is my short story. Did you know that when I started here at MUMC, the price of gas was only $1.23 a gallon? eBay had started a new online auction website, and Princess Diana and Prince, Prince Charles divorced. That was in 1996. But there I was, little old me, at the age of 31, starting a new career in a church that some would say they were really kind of surprised the walls didn't collapse when I walked in. <laughs> See, my parents didn't take me to church, didn't even make me go, so I really didn't know everything that goes on inside and out of a church. My granny, who is from North Carolina, was a Baptist, and trust me, she was a Southern Baptist girl. My mom told me she believed, but we didn't really talk about it much, as my dad did. But I was baptized Catholic. I know this. So to me, I was a little confused. Back then, my biggest concern when starting a new job was helping to provide for my family and being able to be there for my family when they needed me. So I needed a job that would understand that my family came first in my life. Back then, my son was only 10 years old. My husband were already worked outside of Marshall, so the only person left was me. The pastors at the time were Reverend Bill Johnson and Reverend Meg Peterson. Maybe some of you remember them. I remember having a lot of questions for Reverend Bill because I was so confused over this God thing. For me back then, it was just a job, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, get in, get out. That was it, right? Not so much. Like I would, you know, leave work and I would go to the store and people would start asking me church questions and I'm not working. I'm thinking, I don't have the church stamped on my BVDs. Why are they asking me questions now? Well, I had a long le lesson to learn. I kept thinking that when I left work, I didn't, I had, I had to just stop, but that wasn't the way that it worked. See, for example, my husband, he worked in a factory all his life so far, and it was way different. You worked, you know, seven to three, you're out, you're done. Forget about it. So in the meantime, about six months later, Reverend Johnson moved to Wyoming UMC by Grand Rapids, and in comes Pastor Reverend Keith Hefner. Oh, by the way, I meant to tell you, we're not going to see the price of gas below $1.23 ever again. <laughs> Change. It's 1999. We had a world worries about Y2K and the millennium bug. Toy Story came out as well, so that was a good thing. Three years into my work here, I'm finding that the commitment levels that members of the church put into the building was unbelievable. They did it for free. They do the mowing, the flower beds, the cleaning. I wondered why. 
I recall asking Doris Brink, who worked the front desk for me every Monday, why? If you might remember Doris, she'd pull into the parking lot in her white Cadillac and volunteer her time all afternoon, working on membership books, trying to keep them up to date, and along the way, teaching me tidbits of information. Had I known then, her helpful advice would still be with me to this day. Like when I'd ask a question, something about faith or my misconception of the role of a pastor, remember, sunshine, she'd say, they are human too. Doris worked the front desk until she couldn't drive anymore and eventually passed on, but she's still here with us. She's in the memorial garden. Reverend Meg Peterson eventually moved on to do her own gig, and Reverend Judy Downing came in for a year. Now it's July of 1999, and, and as the Methodists know, it's possibly time for transition per the bishop. Meet Reverend Len Schoner as our new lead pastor, and we'll, we'll not have an associate now. Reverend Len seemed to be the perfect cookie cutout of what a pastor ought to be to me. He was easy to talk to, never seemed to get worked up over anything, constantly giving us great feedback on life lessons, and teaching, teaching us, his staff, along the way that we all have gifts. He showed the staff back then by giving us the Myers-Briggs type indicator test. This was a personality, <laughs> you're giggling at me, this was a personality type test. In my mind, I'm thinking, what is this about? <sighs> now I know and I understand, but then I didn't know. We all took the test, and Pastor Len gave us the results in a staff meeting, and I remember him saying to me, I'm not going to start thinking until I'm 50. I thought, what in the world are you talking about? I'm 34 years old, and I'm questioning all this church stuff now. I'm pretty confident that I can do the job, with the exception of the whole proofing thing. Man, I wasn't good at that. So now there's this pastor dude guy that says, I won't think until I'm 50. If only I had known. Change. September 2011. Our world changed forever. I recall around 9 in the morning hearing about the plane that crashed into one of the twin, twin towers. <clears throat> Excuse me. I remember walking down to the nursery here at the church, where the only television was at the time, this was before smartphones, wanting to do something, wanting to do nothing but leave and go get my son out of school and go home, fearing what could happen next. We all have our own memories of that day. The church held a service that night, bringing everyone together that wanted to come and ask God to help us through this terrible, tragic, life-changing morning, one that we could never have dreamed of could happen and to, in mind, ask for answers as to how a country can move forward and begin to heal from such hate and such hurt. We also gathered at the fountain to hold hands of neighbors and even strangers to sing songs of hope and healing. Change. 2013. Gas is 3.53 a gallon. The average cost of a new house is $289,000. Lance Armstrong admitted to doping in all his Tour de France wins during his cycling career in an interview with Oprah Winfrey. Sony released the PlayStation 4, while Microsoft releases the Xbox One. What? Oh, it was an arm and a leg in your firstborn. My bad. <laughs> Pastor Len retired and Pastor Melanie arrives. I can now admit that Pastor Len was right. I did start thinking at the age of 47, <laughs> to the point where now people ask me if I've heard their question. We do change, grow, and mature as we age. Well, for me, it did anyway. I had to watch, learn, and be in worship service to see and feel what and why this church thing is so important to so many. In each and every one of you, it's the, excuse me, I'm sorry, I lost my place. I was really cruising along, too. <laughs> it's the, 
It's each and every one of you. It's being the best person you can be, not only for yourself, but how you see others and how you help others and understanding why and how the commitment feels so good to share. I was told once that God is like a spirit. When my, when my dad would say, all good things come to those who wait, and everything happens for a reason. Then my mom would say, yesterday's gone. Tomorrow isn't here. Live for today. That's the way I was tra- taught about faith. It's inside you. It's like if your glass half to em- half empty or half full. The choice is yours. Taking scripture from a Bible to me is a lot to process, a lot to know how to relate what happened thousands of years ago and how I would take what was being taught then and relate it to me in today's world. It's not easy. It's a true challenge. But what I finally realized was how much of a difference can be made by one person at a time or one short story at a time. As Doris Brink said, we are human. We all have to go through the, the changes of light that it throws at us. I have found that in my journey to be someone that follows rules of being good to others, not being selfish, putting others first is a gift that we'll keep giving. We can learn, grow, teach, and sleep at night knowing that we have done the absolute best we can for ourselves, our families, and hopefully for our God that has given us direction if we choose to take it. Yep, it's a choice. We have one life. It's what we make of it. I have come to realize since attending on Sundays that most who attend this church are giving, caring, loving souls, my church family. Change. July 2021. Welcome, Pastor Aaron and your family. Let us continue to be the proud congregation we are now and for years to come. Being there for each other, for our community, and know that we are truly making a difference. Sometimes that's something that just happens when you realize there is something a little bigger than you and I. Thank you. Morning, everyone. Uh, My name is Maddie Martinson, and I am the interim uh, discipleship director here at the church. I've been attending this church Well, well, since I came out of the womb, (laughs) since I was born. Uh, Some of you probably remember me waddling around here when I was, you know, this big. Um, And I actually uh, brought a picture, if we want to show that, of me on the day of my baptism. Uh, That's me and my family. I'm, you know, being held by my mom, and that's my brother Jacob in my dad's arms. A lot has changed since that picture was taken, obviously. This was back in 2002, I believe. Um, A lot has changed, but there are some things that haven't changed, and I'm not just talking about the red carpet in this room. (laughs) Uh, So a couple years ago, four years ago, uh, one of my first big transitions in life was from high school to college. Uh, A lot of young adults go through this change, and shortly, it was a bit of a rough transition for me. Uh, I had a hard time moving away from the only home that I ever knew to the middle of nowhere, Indiana, to Taylor University, a small Christian college that is literally in the cornfields. As the weeks and months flew by, however, I began to experience a more personal change, and I began to make friends. Being surrounded by so many students passionate about Jesus, I began to recognize for the first time what living a Christian life was like. You know, I grew up in the church, and this church taught me all the foundational truths that I needed to know, that, you know, God loved me, and I was saved by Jesus, and stuff like that. But I didn't realize that being a Christian required me to actively follow and pursue Jesus every day. 
During my time at Taylor, I experienced immense spiritual growth after years of stagnation and frustration. I'll be the first to admit that I cringe a little bit when I think of the person I was four years ago. I'm grateful that God worked in my heart while I was at Taylor because I would not be standing before you today if he hadn't. In addition to the personal spiritual change that I experienced, I also felt a strong pull in a different vocational direction than I had originally planned. I went into Taylor as a math major because that's what I was good at in high school and I figured, why not? However, through a series of providential events and encounters with people who entered my life, I felt a strong divine call to go into full-time ministry. And this change is what landed me in front of you here today. I finished my degree in ministry about a month and a half ago. I graduated, yet another transition was lying before me. But I didn't feel nearly as petrified as I did when I left Marshall for the first time. That's not to say I wasn't petrified, though. <laughs> Little did I know that my first job out of college would be right here at my home church. A few weeks ago, by God's grace and providence, I was asked to step into a role that I had observed from afar for several years growing up. And I'm excited about it. But I also have a lot of my life left to live. I'm only in my early 20s, and I'm committed to listening to God's call and obeying him. And obeying means that there are there are going to be so many more transitions ahead of me, which is scary and exciting and anxiety-inducing all at once. But despite all of these changes, God is unchanging. And I trust in an unchanging God who has called me to be here, right here, right now. Thanks. Good morning. Those of you that don't know me, my name is Dennis Gorsline, and I'm the media director here at Marshall United Methodist Church. Today I'll be wrapping up our series on change by sharing my own short story. Well, I'll try to keep it short. I must say that standing in front of the sanctuary is change enough for me. As a matter of fact, after spending so much time running media from the balcony, I probably recognize the back of your heads more than your faces. <laughs> Let me start with a little history of who I am. As a youngster, I was aware that my grandmother was very active in her small country church and the Ladies' Aid Society, as they called it then. My father's name is on the cradle roll hanging in the wall for the church, documenting his attendance there 75 or 85 years ago. My sister would encourage me to come along with youth activities at the church, Christmas caroling and the like. It never really caught on with me, and I was far short of a regular attender. In the early 80s, I started attending MUMC for a while, and I got married in this very sanctuary 40 years ago, and the carpet was red then, too. <laughs> Unfortunately, neither my attendance nor my marriage lasted. I found myself a divorced custodial father of two who spent far more Sundays mowing the lawn than worshiping. A couple years later, I found myself back at MUMC, this time attending a singles group, a small group of its time, I made some friends, went to some events, but again, neither the attendance nor the group lasted, just the single part. I eventually found myself attending that small country church that my grandmother, father, and sister had in their own ways encouraged me to attend. I was still single, life was full of change then as well, but once again, my attendance waned. The pastor noticed and he started sending audio cassettes of the service in the mail. Still, I hesitated and stayed home on Sundays. Then one day, the, parent, the pastor apparently got fed up of being ignored, or maybe he was just doing what he called to do, and he knocked on my door. Once again, I returned to church. In the following years, I met Chris. She joined me at this country church. We became active there. I eventually took a position on the board, and it took all of these changes to get me back into church and I'm not even back at MUMC yet. Between the summer of 2003 and fall of 2004, I started a new position with the Postal Service in a new town. Chris and I were married, and we bought our current house in what I considered at the time to be the big town of Marshall. It wasn't long before we started looking at churches, and with Chris's background being from the Methodist Church, MUMC was a natural fit. We quickly settled into the contemporary service 
sat at a table right up front and worshiped. A few years later, the geek side of me could not resist volunteering as a media person. It started small, once or twice a month, learning how things are done and just helping out, you know, just a little. Having spent almost two decades working behind the scenes of live theater with the Marshall Civic Players, working behind the scenes with a live church service didn't seem like such a stretch. Over the years, I began doing more and more, and then bam, COVID. On Tuesday, March 10th, 2020, Chris and I were scheduled to run media for an event here at MUMC. The Community Action Agency had rented the building for that day. Almost 200 teachers and administrators were coming, along with a speaker from out of town. The speaker was due to fly in from Seattle. Yes, Seattle, basically the first city in the U.S. to identify COVID-19. In March 10th, well, if you look up coronavirus tracking on the Michigan.gov website, you'll see that the day they began tracking was March 10th of 2020. With a little scrambling, several cross-country phone calls and a day of testing, Chris and I connected the speaker in Seattle on a remote interactive video feed here at MUMC. And this was only the start. The real change was to come. The earliest days of the pandemic were full of change. When would the church be open? How many people could be in the church at one time? How do we reach the congregation? How do we lead worship? How do we stay connected? I have to say, looking back, it's really just a blur. But the two things I remember clearest are the weeks that went by when Pastor Melanie and myself were the only two in the building. I also remember the conversations that I had with her and others about how do we keep worship that we stream on Facebook, even in the midst of an empty building, as close to normal as possible. My inbox began filling up with videos from Ruth Ann, Rachel, liturgists, from Rod and the modern worship director, and even an entire sermon or two from Pastor Melanie when she was quarantined at home. I also remember putting together the faces and voices of over a dozen members of our congregation when we couldn't be together, sing together, or worship together in person. If you had asked me two years ago if I knew what change is, I would have likely said yes. However, I've learned more about change in the last year and a half than in the previous 55. Just in the last week, Chris and I changed from having eight grandchildren to 10 as my son welcomed his identical twins, Oliver and Hudson. As we heard earlier in Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 and 19, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing, now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Many times in my life, God made a way for me in the wilderness or streams in the wasteland. I didn't always follow him, but God didn't give up on me. God knew the changes I would face, the skills I would need, and the gifts I had to offer. Change can be defined as making something or someone different, to alter or to modify. It can also mean to replace something or someone with something else, especially something of the same kind that is newer or better. Now that part came right out of the dictionary. It's, as I close out our series today on change, I stand remembering that there has already been a lot of change in my life and in yours too. And like me, some of that change has been recent, some has likely happened slowly, and some probably happened long ago. Here at MUMC, we're about to experience the change that Pastor Aaron will bring. As for me, I'm not yet sure exactly what those changes will be, but I'm ready to support her as her life, her home, and her church all change around her. Please pray with me. Dear Lord, as we worship together in your name, give us patience as we experience change in our lives, our homes, our families, and our church. As we change from where can we go to where will we go, from what can we do to what will we do. 
And as we change from looking at someone who needs help to being the someone who provides that help. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Ron and Chris. Prayer requests can be shared on our website through the connection card. Um, if you are not currently receiving our midweek updates, be sure to give us your email on the way out and we'll get that to you once a week. Now, I would like to invite Amy Lemon, the chair of the Staff Parish Relations Committee, along with Gwen Crapo for the appointment of Pastor Aaron Fitzgerald. Before we start the celebration of the appointment, I want to make a special note um, today to uh, Charlotte Torpy. If you would just raise your hand, Charlotte, please. You don't have to stand up. Thank you. Um, she made the stole that we will be giving to Pastor Aaron in the appointment process this morning. So I thought that was really special. So I wanted to make sure to um, acknowledge that kindness and thoughtfulness that had gone into that gift from us to her today. Dear friends, today we welcome Pastor Aaron Fitzgerald, who has been appointed to serve as our pastor. We believe she is well qualified and has been prayfully appointed by our Bishop David Bard. Aaron, you have been sent to live among us as a bearer of the word of God, a minister of the sacraments and a sustainer of the love, order, service, and discipleship of the people of God. 
Today, I reaffirm this commitment in the presence of Marshall United Methodist Church. Now, if you will all join me in a response to the liturgy. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as a people committed to participate in the ministries of the church by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service, will you celebrate this new beginning, support and uphold Pastor Aaron in these ministries? Gifts, service, and witness. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger. Let us pray. Eternal God, strengthen and sustain us in our ministries together with Aaron as our pastor, giving her and us patience, courage, wisdom, so to care for one another and challenge one another that today we may follow Jesus Christ, living together in love and offering our gifts and talents in your service through Jesus Christ our Lord. And uh, Gwen is going to give Pastor Erin her stole. Oh, please open it so we can see it. And if everybody notices, it matches the altar vestments. We also have just a welcome gift of flowers and a small token to her and her family today as they join us in ministry um, going forward. And we're going to share them with everyone. No, I'm just <laughs> So please, let's do just another warm round of applause to welcome Pastor Aaron this morning. They haven't taken the mic away from me yet, so I'm going to say one thing to greet you all. Good morning. I am so elated to be here with you all. We have been waiting for this day for a long time, haven't we? Oh, July 4th couldn't come soon enough. Um, my family and I have been packing and unpacking for, it seems like, 65 days, and that's too long. Um, but now we are moved into the parsonage in Albion, Michigan. Uh, we're out in the country on 29 Mile Road. And um, it's a beautiful house. We can't wait to have you all over for a bonfire or a cookout or something. And um, I'm here. I'm your pastor now. And I'm just so excited. Um, you all are my third appointment. Um, I've served a church in Grand Rapids and in Rochester and, and now Marshall. So I've been a pastor for 12 years, and um, I'm just really, really excited. My children are here today, Michael, who's five, and Samuel. Michael's peeking in the doors right now because he knows I'm talking. Um, and then Sam is the baby. He's just one. Um, so please, please do say hi after church um, You'll see Michael with a mask on just because he's not vaccinated yet, but that's coming soon too. So thanks be to God. Now you. Now you. Okay. I'll just use it. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, now please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We'd like to give you all an opportunity to be blessed by blessing Christ's church, to offer hope by giving hope to the work that Jesus loves. You can drive up to the church and drop off a gift in the offering box uh, underneath the overhang on the north doors. Or you can jump onto our webpage, umcmarshall.org, and give there. 
We are making a difference and changing the world together. Thanks so much for partnering with, partnering with us. And yeah, more information about our ministries and the opportunity to support them by donating can also be found on our website, umcmarshall.org. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge the change, the change in our world, the change in our leadership, and we welcome Pastors Aaron and her husband Joel into our lives and community. Please give them the guidance and direction for their impact on our community and their churches. We ask that our gifts and tithes and offerings are used to develop those relationships and their influence in our communities. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Please now join us in our closing hymn, America on 697.
Before we go, I want to share some exciting news. VBS is back! Yay! Yay! After a year of virtual vacation Bible school, we're coming back with a one-night family event on Wednesday, July 28th, um, from 5.30 to 8.30. Kids and their families will take a deep dive into the Bible through a story, games, crafts, music, dinner, and more. You can find, uh, soon coming, there will be a registration form on our Facebook page to sign up. And if you have any questions or need more information, feel free to contact me. Thanks for joining us today. Take a moment to share today's worship with others. It'll just take, it'll just take a moment and what a blessing it can be. Now receive this blessing. May the peace of God enfold us, the love of God uphold us, the wisdom of God guide us. Go in peace.